In these next problems, we're applying, or attempting to apply, Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem states that if you have a function, let's just draw a sample function here, and you pick an interval where the value of the function where the interval starts and the value of the function where the interval ends are the same, so these are the same y values here, and here's our, our interval. If that's the case, then at some point, there has to be a spot where the slope of the tangent line is zero. There is some value c, let's call it, if our interval starts at a and goes to b. There's some value c in there where the slope of the tangent is zero, like right there. So basically what this is saying, if you start at some level and you go some distance and end at the same level, well, there's only a couple of things that could happen. You could go straight across. If you went straight across, your, the slope of your tangent line would be zero the whole way, and that would satisfy Rolle's theorem. You could go up and back down again, but there has to be that point where the slope is zero. You could go down and back up again. There has to be a point where the slope is zero. You go up and down and up and down, and then there's lots of points where the slope would be zero. But Rolle's theorem says there's going to be at least one of those points. If the function is continuous, differentiable, and starting and ending points of your interval are the same value on the function. Let's look at a couple of problems. So this first one says, if Rolle's theorem can be applied to f of x on the indicated interval, find all the values of c in the interval such that f prime of c equals zero. So the derivative of c equals zero. This is exactly what we're talking about. The slope of the tangent line is zero. Same thing as the derivative. And then we have this function, f of x equals the absolute value of x minus eight on this interval from negative eight to eight. And I just want to sketch a little picture of this function. The absolute value function looks like those two antennae. And when you have this minus eight, it just starts down here at the point zero, negative eight. And we have this left-hand side and this right-hand side, and it continues on like that. So that's our function, and it hits um, negative 8 here at 0, and it hits at positive 8 here at 0. So if you were to plug in negative 8 there and 8 there into the function, you'd see they both come out to 0, so the endpoints have equal values. So you th might think you can apply Rolle's theorem here, but this function is not continuous and differentiable along that whole interval. There's this weird corner, and that is not a quality of a continuous differentiable function. And in fact, at this point right here, the function is not continuous. So Rolle's theorem does not apply to this function, and we can just say does not apply. Let's try another one. This one says, if Rolle's theorem can be applied to f of x on the indicated interval, find all the values of c in the interval such that f prime of c equals zero. And here's our function. And this is a nice polynomial. I say nice because we know these kinds of functions are continuous and differentiable across their whole domain. So we don't have to worry about what we had to worry about with the absolute value function. Now we have our interval here from 1 to 5, so what we need to do is plug those numbers in to test if the endpoints of our function are actually equal, because that's another uh, uh, condition, a precondition of Rolle's theorem. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see, that would be 1 cubed is 1, that would be minus 7, plus 11, minus 5, and that comes out to 0. Let's try the 5, there's a little bit more math there, let's see, 5 cubed is 125, and 5 squared, 25 times 7, so that's minus 175 plus 55 minus 5, and lo and behold, that comes out to 0, too. So we are good to go. The endpoints have the same value in the function. It's continuous and differentiable along that interval, so we can apply Rolle's theorem. Now, how do we find those values of c? Well, we want to find the zeros of the derivative of the function. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. So f prime of x is 3x squared minus 14x plus 11. And if we're lucky, we can factor this. Oh yeah, I think we can. So this is 3x minus 11 and x minus 1. 
Yep, that works out. And so our x values here are 11 thirds and 1. And here we want to pause for a minute and consider, are they in the interval? Well, 11 thirds is definitely between 1 and 5, so that's fine. But 1 is actually the end point of the interval, so it's not included in the interval, so we can get rid of that one. And we're left with just 11 thirds, and this is the value C at which the slope of the tangent line is 0. So this is our answer. All right, let's try one with a trigonometric function. These can be pretty tricky. So same business, if the theorem can be applied, and here, the, the sine function, we've got our function here is sine of 4x plus 6 pi. Um, that sine function, uh, you know, goes up and down, but it's continuous and differentiable along its whole domain. So we don't really have to worry about that with the sine function. We're going to want to test the endpoints of our interval, though. So let's go ahead and plug those in. Let's see, 4 times 3 pi. And actually, when I'm, well, let's, let's just go ahead and do this. 4 times, so that's negative 12 pi over 2, just plugging that in for x, plus 6 pi. So that's a negative 6 pi plus a 6 pi, and this is the sine, so that's actually 0 inside there, so that's the sine of 0, which equals 0. And this one, let's see, we get negative 20 pi over 4 plus 6 pi, and that comes out to just pi, because this is five, negative 5 pi, so that's the sine of pi, and the sine of pi is 0. So we're good to go. We've got zero on both of them. So the next step is to take the derivative and figure out where the derivative is zero. So the derivative of the sine of 4x plus 6 pi, it's going to be the cosine of 4x plus 6 pi times the derivative of what's inside, and the derivative of what's inside is 4. So this is actually f prime of x is 4 times the cosine of 4x plus 6 pi. Now here it might get, seem to get a little tricky about where um, this is zero. And first we want to consider the, the interval that we're looking at. And we've got an interval of negative 3 pi over 2 to negative 5 pi over 4. And if you sketch a unit circle here, negative 3 pi over 2, well we get our negative values by going around the circle this way. So here would be pi over 2, pi, negative 3 pi over 2 would be right here. And then negative 5 pi over 4, well, here's 1 fourth pi, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, so 5 fourths. So this is negative 5 pi over 4 right there. So our interval is just this little chunk right there. And we want to ask ourselves what value in this little chunk would equate to um, a, a value of 0 here in this function. And this is where you need to do a little bit of thinking. First of all, where is the cosine 0? Cosine is the, the x value, so it's 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So if there's some way I can make this equate to pi over 2, I want to do that. And what I'm doing here to the x is I'm multiplying that by 4. I can kind of ignore this 6 pi because all that really does is send me around the circle three times exactly, and I am still back where I started. So the plus 6 pi is not too much of a concern to me. Uh, but what can I multiply by 4 to get pi, something that's like pi over 2? And what I'm going to do is actually convert these endpoints um, to eighths. So this would be negative 10 pi over 8 and um, negative 12 pi over 8. So that's my range. And there's a value right in between there, 11 pi, negative 11 pi over 8. If you multiply that by 4, you would get 11 pi, or negative 11 pi over 2. And the reason I did that is because I want a, a single pi over 2, so I'm looking for odd values of pi over 8 to multiply by, by 4 to see if we can get this single pi over 2. So let's just try this 11, negative 11 pi over so I've got 4 cosine times 4 times negative 11 pi over 8 
plus 6 pi. And the 4 and the 8, so this becomes a 2 down here on the bottom, and I get 4 cosine of negative 11 pi over 2 plus, aha, uh -huh, and I've got 6 pi here. Well, 6 pi is 12 pi over 2, and that adds up to pi over 2, and that's just what we we're looking for because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So that number right in the middle meets our criteria. So that might seem like I, I did that a little bit backwards, um, but uh, it pays with these trig functions to kind of think about the interval uh, you're on and what mathematical um, uh, thing you're going to apply to it to take a good guess at the right value here. In this case, it was the value uh, of negative 11 um, eighths, 11 pi over 8. So that's what we plugged in here, 11 pi over, negative 11 pi over 8. And that is in our interval, and it definitely makes a zero of the function, so of the derivative of the function, and so that is our c value. So that's a little bit of work with Rolle's theorem. My name is Larry. I'm a teacher at EdVisions Off Campus. It's an online project-based school in Minnesota. If you're interested, you can find us on the web at lovethisschool.org. Thanks.